meet Hariya. He is a farmer in a remote village in India. His great great grandfather owned a very large farmland. However, through division of property over several generations, Hariya has been left with a small plot of land to cultivate. Hariya still uses primitive methods of agriculture. Irrigation methods are developed in some parts of the state that Hariya lives in. However, Hariya still depends on the monsoon and the natural fertility of the soil to grow crops. To buy seeds, every year, Hariya takes a loan from the local money lender, who charges high rates of interest. Every year, Hariya prays for a good crop. However, he has no way to ensure his crop against destruction by natural forces like fire, drought, flood, disease or cyclone. Even if Hariya has a good crop, the middleman who helps him sell the crop makes the real profit. Hariya hardly gets enough money to sustain his family and repay his loan. The problems faced by Hariya have been faced by farmers in India for centuries. These problems lead to poor yield. And many farmers abandon agriculture to find other vocations. This is not good for a country like India that has a large, increasing population to feed. Realizing the importance of new technology, institutions and bodies to improve the lot of farmers, the government of India took several initiatives after independence. The land reforms initiated in the first five-year plan aimed to abolish zamindari and consolidate land holdings. The consolidation of land holdings involved combining adjacent small fields into single large farms and encouraging individual landowners to do cooperative farming. The Government of India introduced major agricultural reforms in the 1960s and 1970s that came to be known as the Green Revolution in India. The major highlights of these reforms were providing high yielding varieties of seeds and fertilizers to farmers and developing large scale irrigation facilities to allow them to grow two crops in a year. There was also a white revolution led by Dr. Varghese Kurian. Kurian and his team invented a process of making milk powder and condensed milk from buffalo milk. Conventionally, this was done using cow's milk. The benefits of land and agricultural reforms were limited to a few areas in the country. Hence, the government launched a comprehensive land development program in the 1980s and 1990s. The main highlights of the land development program were insurance cover to farmers against damage to crops and setting up of rural banks and cooperative societies to provide them loans on easy rates of interest. The government 
also started broadcasting radio and television programs to educate farmers about new techniques of agriculture and give them prior warning about weather conditions. To stop the exploitation of farmers by middlemen, the government announced the procurement, remunerative and minimum support prices of all the major crops in India. The government also launched personal benefit schemes for farmers like the Kisan credit card and the personal accident insurance scheme. The government of India launched several programs and initiatives to improve the condition of farmers. However, the implementation of these programs needs improvement so that their benefits reach the farmers in all parts of the country. Before we end, let us talk about a movement called the Bloodless Revolution in India. This movement was started by Acharya Vinoba Bhave, a staunch follower of Mahatma Gandhi and aimed to improve the condition of landless farmers. On April 18, 1951, Acharya Vinoba Bhave was visiting Pochampali, a small village in Andhra Pradesh. There, some landless villagers asked him for land to sustain their families. Why Vinoba Bhave assured them that he would talk to the government? A local landlord, Ramchandra Reddy, offered to donate 80 acres of land to the landless villagers. This was the beginning of the Bhutan movement. Vinoba Bhave carried this idea all over India and many landlords participated in Bhutan. Some big landlords gave away entire villages to the landless, initiating the Gram Dan movement. Why most landlords participated in the Bhutan and Gram Dan movements in good faith? Some of them were forced to donate their surplus land when the government imposed the Land Sealing Act. Under this act, no individual or family could own more than a certain quantum of land. 